<laughs> Welcome to GMAT Tuesdays. My name is Kevin, coming to you from Magoosh. Um, welcome to the next in our series of Real World Matters. Um, and in this series, or excuse me, this video, uh, we're talking about a fundamental concept that you need to know if you're headed to business school. Um, and remember, the concepts we cover in this series are not things that are actually tested on the GMAT. Um, they're just concepts that you should know about generally. And also, if you know about them, it'll make it a little bit easier when you encounter these concepts, say in a reading passage or in a critical reasoning argument. Um, so we're dealing with a fundamental con concept of economics known as supply and demand. Um, and so supply is basically how much of a thing there is, so how many markers are there in the world. And this also accounts for how difficult it would be to create these things or grow these things. Um, and the demand is how much people want it. Um, and so it's defined as an economic model for price determination in a market. And there's some key words that you should pay attention to here. One, model. That means it's not real. We are not exactly replicating what happens in a market. We're trying to model it as best we can. We're trying to understand it, see what actually happens in a competitive market. So there's absolutely going to be exceptions to this rule, um, but this is a good place to start, and this is definitely where everyone starts in Economics 101. Um, the other thing is that it's all about price. So it's about determining the price of a thing. So how do you know how much to sell the orange marker for? I've used it already. What is the cost of it going to be? Well, it depends not only on the fact that I have one, but on the people out there who might want it. Does anybody out there want this? All right. Leave me a comment. Uh, maybe I'll send it to you. Um, so let me get my Magoosh colors and draw a graph. So what you can see often is that the supply and demand is modeled on a graph. And your y-axis is going to be uh, your cost or price. And then on the bottom is going to be the quantity of the thing. Um, the demand curve starts here and goes down. And the supply curve goes the other way. And basically, how this works is the price, the determination for the price is where demand equals supply. And that is one place on this graph that happens to be right here. So um, what we'd say is that if we made so many of these markers, then we could sell them for that specific price, whatever it would be. Um, but moving on, I'd like to talk more about just the basics of supply and demand, some fundamental concepts that are good to know about. Um, so there's four basic concepts. Um, the first one is, if demand goes up for something and supply remains equal, stays the same, you're going to have a shortage, which means you're not going to have enough to supply the people who want the thing, and the price will go up. And so a good example of this, I wrote the World Cup here, and specifically World Cup tickets. So think about, or maybe you can think about a concert or uh, some other sporting event, but the World Cup is coming up and it seems like a good example. Um, so when you buy a World Cup ticket, it's set at a certain price, you buy it, um, or you get the option to buy it. And then if you go on the black market, you'll notice that the prices are a lot more expensive. That's because there's a shortage of tickets. Demand is high, supply is staying the same, and the price of tickets is just going to go up and up and up, especially once you get to some of the final matches. Um, the second basic concept is if demand goes down for a product, supply remains the same, then you're going to have what's called a surplus, which means you have too many of the products, um, then price will go down. And we see this every single time a new iPhone comes out. Apple launches its new iPhone 8 or whatever comes out, and all the previous iPhones get cheaper. That's because dem demand for those older iPhones goes down because there's a new iPhone out there that people want. 
Um, supply broadly changes a little bit, but it's relatively the same. And so what happens is you have a surplus of those older iPhones, and so the price is dropped so that people would be encouraged or more willing to purchase one of those older iPhones. Um, the third basic concept, um, so now these two are when demand changed and supply remained the same. These last two are about supply changing and demand remaining the same. So number three, supply goes up, demand remains the same, and what you're gonna have is a surplus again and the, ply, excuse me, the price will drop. Um, so you can think about seasonal fruits and vegetables seem to obey uh, this basic concept, where once a fruit comes in season, let's say um, cherries, cherries come in season in California around July, June or July. Um, so at the time, the supply just skyrockets. There's tons of cherries on the market. Demand for cherries year-round probably stays a little bit about the same. Uh, maybe when people see the cherries, they realize they want them. Um, but basically, what you end up is with a surplus, and price continues to drop. So it's really cheap to buy cherries in the summer, but extremely expensive to buy them in the winter when there's not a lot of them. Um, so think fruits and vegetables um, for this third concept. Finally, the last one. Um, if supply goes down, demand remains the same, then you're going to have another shortage and price will go up. And so a good example of this right now, which is not um, as exciting, here in California we experience a pretty terrible drought. Um, we did just recently get some rain, but we need a lot more. So we're very concerned about the price of water, uh, especially people in the Central Valley all of our farmers and ranchers are extremely concerned about the price of water and be able to get water. And so what's happened is our supply of water in California has dropped dramatically. Demand has stayed the same. Nothing's changed. We still want to grow our fruits and vegetables and still raise all of our animals. There's a shortage of water and so the price of water is going up. Um, so for our agriculture and, um, and for our ranchers, this is going to be a big problem. Cities, uh, not as much. They can fork up enough money to buy the water, but for, you can imagine, a farmer or a rancher, um, it's gonna be a lot harder to stomach those costs, and a lot of them are actually not gonna be planting plants uh, this year. So we're actually gonna see it affect our fruits and vegetables as well. Um, so supply goes down, demand remains the same, and water gets more expensive. Um, so what you can see here is when there's a shortage, price goes up, and when there's a surplus, prices go down. Great, so those are the four basic concepts of supply and demand. Again, this is a very, uh, it's a very complex concept and requires a lot more studies than just this video, but hopefully this gives you some understanding of these concepts so they're not super foreign and they're not too hard uh, to understand and wrap your mind around when you're reading a passage or argument in the GMAT. Well, if you guys have any questions out there, please feel free to reach out to us. We are very happy to help. Um, I hope that your GMAT studies are going well. Get out there and dominate the GMAT. And I will be here next Tuesday to go through more of these concepts and others. Uh, be excellent to the universe, and I'll see you soon.